Thank you. Thank Thank you. you so much. <laughs> it is such a pleasure to be here. Um, and I just want to say good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as you heard, I am U.S. Senator Kay Hagan, and I'm so pleased to be here with each and every one of you. Thanks for your engagement. Thanks for your energy. I'm going to need each and every one of you. Everything that I do in Washington is for you. It's for your educational opportunities, for your future, and for our future as a nation. It is truly exciting to think of the opportunities that you have ahead of you. I know that you're going to make all of our communities and all of North Carolina great. You're going to make our leaders proud, and one day, I hope it is you standing behind this podium. That's what we need. I want to take just a minute to tell you about the work that I am doing in Washington and how high the stakes are in this election. As a mom of three young adults, I know how important and how expensive a good education can be. Last summer, as interest rates on student loans were slated to increase from 3.4 to 6.8%, I hosted a roundtable in Charlotte on college affordability. One of the participants was Central Piedmont Community College student Nathan Lane, and his story really sticks with me. Let me tell you about Nathan's story. He already had a lot on his mind. He was working three part-time jobs while he was going to school, and he was about to graduate from CPCC and then start classes at UNC Charlotte. Like many students, he was using federal loans to pay for his education, but he worried that after getting his degree, he'd be faced with an interest rate that he couldn't afford. For Nathan, if the interest rates had in fact doubled, it meant an extra $2,600 that would have been added to his student loans. And you know, I couldn't sit idly by in the Senate and allowing these interest rates to double. So I supported a bipartisan bill to keep these rates low and ensure that we try as hard as possible not to saddle our young people, just like you, with unsustainable debt four and five and ten years down the road. I am committed to keeping the dream of attending college within reach for every North Carolina student who wants to pursue it. And that means looking at ways to make college more affordable. Protecting North Carolina's historically black colleges and universities is also one of my top priorities. HBCUs play a crucial role in educating students and preparing them to enter the workforce. And I am proud to have supported millions of dollars in funding to benefit 10 of the HBCUs in North Carolina. Now, as many of you uh, are going to be reaching the end of your college education, looking for a job, and then many of those I know here are already working, there's nothing more important than being ready for today's competitive job market. I'm sure more than a few of you here gathered today are already thinking about what's next after graduation. I believe that improving the skills gap, which we see all over the workforce in North Carolina and around the country, uh, we've got to improve that. I have a bipartisan bill called the America Works Act uh, that partners with community colleges and industry to close the gap by creating industry-recognized portable credentials in a range of areas, from aerospace and aviation to textiles. But we also have to look at ways to jumpstart our economic growth by expanding lending to small business owners. I hear all the time uh, how difficult and hard it is for new starting businesses to get access to capital. Uh, and I'm sure there are many of you in this room today who you've got a great idea for a business and we've got to support and we've got to harness that energy so that it means jobs for North Carolina. And you may have seen this week the Supreme Court heard the Hobby Lobby case where employers are trying to deny their employees the right to receive insurance coverage for birth control. We know that any preventive care, including birth control, is basic health care for women. And this is a conversation between a woman and her doctor, not a woman and her boss, and not a woman and her senator. But let me tell you, my election is going to be a contrast. My opponents have all said that they believe the states have the authority to ban birth control. 
They even favor a personhood constitutional amendment which could make some forms of birth control illegal. And one of my opponents, Tom Tillis, led a midnight vote to defund Planned Parenthood in North Carolina, which he was successful in doing. And that's not going to be the only contrast this election year. While I am focused on common sense issues and putting North Carolina first, reinstating unemployment insurance, raising the minimum wage, making our state a more equal home for our LGBT citizens, access to health care, and college affordability, all of those things I am heavily engaged in. My opponents are now competing to see who has the most fringe, anti-middle class agenda for North Carolina. And unlike Tom Tillis, who led the passage of the voter suppression bill, I am 100% committed to protecting everyone's right to vote, including our great college students whose voice matters just as much as everyone else. As we saw in Raleigh last year, laws that restrict access to voting are unacceptable. They undermine the very foundation of our democracy. The North Carolina law even states that that your state university IDs are not an acceptable form of, identica of identification, and yet they are issued by the state of North Carolina. I urged the Justice Department to investigate the North Carolina voting law, and I am pleased that Attorney General Eric Holder and others have decided to take action on that issue. This year, protecting and standing up for the basic right to vote could not be more important since outside interest groups have now spent over $10 million to distort my record and prop up my opponent as they try to buy this U.S. Senate seat. They know they can get someone like Tom Tillis to pass their agenda just like it's been done in Raleigh. And they know that I will never carry their water. But they seem to be missing one thing, and they don't know that North Carolina is not for sale. North Carolinians are not going to be fooled by these outsiders, and I will need your help. I'm going to need your enthusiasm this year as we stand up for our shared values as well as our state's future. Knocking on doors, making phone calls, bringing students from across the state together is necessary and critical for a win this November. Right now, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, go to khagan.com. Please sign up to get involved. And when I launch Students for K, I hope to have all of you right there with me. In North Carolina, we have a state toast, the land of the longleaf pine. And in that state toast, we state where the weak grow strong and the strong grow great. These are important words to consider as we think about the contrast that this election and how our involvement can make the difference in keeping our state a place to grow strong and great. Thanks so much for every one of you being here today. Thank you for your leadership, for your determination, to live up to those ideals. Now, with your help, let's get to work. to Akila right here, uh, go to khagan.com and send them in. That's a great, great question. <laughs> We're going to be opening offices up all across North Carolina. Yep, we're going to have one right here. Um, yes. I asked David Price this a few weeks ago, but with the recent uh, legislations in Colorado and uh, Washington and Attorney General uh, backing down on uh, enforcing uh, federal law where states have legalize marijuana, would you support uh, decriminalization or de uh, classification from Schedule 1 for cannabis? 
You know, I think what's going on in, in Colorado right now, in Colorado right now, is, is an interesting thing to watch and to observe. Um, I can't see that happening right now in North Carolina, uh, but I do think we need to look at the issues that you brought up and uh, and see what they say. Well, uh, specifically about um, taking it from Schedule One. You know, I don't know all the difference of the schedules. I'd have to actually um, look at that and and, uh, and be able to see the comparison and, and see what it does, but. Um, I think you brought up a, a good point. Thank you for your question. Yep. What? And tell me where you live. I am a Greenville native and very proud of it. Great. <laughs> You're welcome to Greenville. Thank you. Point. It's always um, good to be here. What recommendations do you have um, for young people who want to go into public service, um, particularly in issue-based politics? You know, I think there's several things. One, I think you need to uh, get involved in campaigns. Uh, first and foremost, that gives you an avenue, a platform uh, to understand the candidates, understand the issues, and there's not a candidate I know of that doesn't need volunteer help. So I think that's first and foremost. Uh, the other thing is actually to take public policy classes at school. Um, you can learn an incredible amount. Uh, you know, I, had a, uh, I always like to entertain students when they come to D.C. And I had a group of students yesterday uh, that were actually asking me questions um, about, the, uh, about the bilateral security agreement that hasn't been signed in Afghanistan and why. I mean, all of these policy issues, uh, looking at the fact that here in North Carolina, um, our legislature is the only one in the state to change its long-term unemployment insurance formula so that so many people in North Carolina missed out on $780 million that should have come to our state. At the same time, North Carolinians, federal taxpayer dollars, have gone to 49 other states and just not to North Carolina. So these are the public policy issues uh, that you need to follow in the, in the press, in the newspapers, on, uh, on digital media means, and really understand the issues that are going on and how they directly affect each and every one of you here. When you look at our legislature giving tax cuts for the wealthy and cutting um, education by half a billion dollars, 330 million of that at our higher, uh, at our institutions of higher education, something's wrong here. And you as young people uh, need to be fully aware and engaged and you can make a difference. So, you know, as I said, interning is always great. I certainly did that. And I was fortunate I had a, a father uh, who was a mayor, I had an uncle heavily involved in politics, and as a young person, you know, I walked many a mile uh, helping, uh, helping not only relatives but other leaders. Yes, sir. Senator, yes. Um, Matt Hughes from Chapel Hill. It's good to see you again. Good to see you, um, as a recent graduate um, from UNC Chapel Hill, one of the things that myself, my partner, and my friends look at is the amount of debt that we have yeah. having graduated um, with. And so what is your plan or what are your thoughts on kind of helping students graduate with lesser debt and possibly somehow relieving the burden of that debt as some of us look at jobs, um, chasing more lucrative jobs as a result, even though that's not where our heart is. And, you know, one you know, day buying think, a house and whatnot. I think there's uh, two or three things we need to talk about. One is the availability of, of Pell Grant and, and other loans and, and grants. We've got to be sure those are available going forward. And I want to be sure that our country continues to invest in being sure that we have that. At the same time, we can't make it out of reach for people once they borrow that money uh, to actually then still be able to make a car payment make that first home mortgage payment, get married, all of those issues that we know cost money. Um, and I think we need to be looking at things uh, from an affordability standpoint. How can we have, like we do some in North Carolina, more um, early college, more middle college, where you can actually take dual credits when you're still in high school uh, college classes. Uh, how can AP classes really count more from a college uh, credit hours? And really sort of, um, you know, so many kids today that you can almost get two years of college under your belt 
paid for uh, through public education for your 11th and 12th grade year. I mean, that is a great avenue that, that we need to pursue. We also need to look at how we can use online learning in a very effective way um, and from a, a much more inexpensive way uh, in order to, to deliver that. Um, I want to be sure that students in high schools have access to BC calculus, but not every place in North Carolina has access with a person in that classroom. So we've got to look at online technology. A lot of that's going on right now, but I think we can really reduce. Uh, it's not so many hours that you sit in that desk, but it's actually how you can show that you've obtained and learned what you need to, need to know. Uh, and then we've also realized, I mean, right now college debt is surpassing credit card debt for the first time in our history. Uh, and that's another issue that I have great concern about. And the other thing, when I was in the state senate, I spent 10 years in the state senate, one of the things that I mandated was that we teach financial literacy. Uh, in high school. Uh, we cannot get by in our country today without understanding debt. All debt is not bad, but you shouldn't be using it to buy your food and paying your rent. So we've got to be sure uh, that our young people today really have an in-depth understanding. How to do your tax returns? What is your, what's your credit score? You know, these issues that really impact your future in a huge way. But I know that people who graduate from college, you have a much higher earning potential uh, the more you work. I know how important our community college system is. I know how important this America Works biz, uh, bill is that I've got because there are three million job openings in the country right now. There's this huge mismatch of the skills to get those jobs and we can train people to do this. Uh, back in the back. Hi, yes. my name is Maria and I'm a graduate student at VCU. And I just wanted to know- What, what are you studying? Um, uh, Tanti World History. Yeah. So um, I'm just wondering what your stand was on both illegal and legal immigration in the state because you know we have a larger or growing demographic of um, not just um, Hispanics but from other countries as well. Um, that are, um, that population is growing in North Carolina, and we have a lot of students uh, like myself. I'm an immigrant and I'm here, and you know I can vote and all that. But um, there's a lot of other students. As well you know, as there's. The um, and all that. I've, I supported the comprehensive immigration reform bill that came before the Senate, uh, and we need to understand how important it is to get that bill done in the House. Sixty-eight people came together in the U.S. Senate and supported that bill. The Dream Act is included in this comprehensive bill. When I look at North Carolina, when I look at our high-tech industry, when I look at our agricultural industry, two of the main drivers of good jobs in North Carolina, uh, they have come together, two pretty disparate uh, uh, parts of our economy from the high-tech and our agricultural industry, and have stated the real need for immigration reform in North Carolina. And the other thing, I serve on the Armed Services Committee. On the Armed Services Committee, I chair a subcommittee called the Emerging Threats and Capabilities. Cyber terrorism is the terrorist threat uh, facing our nation today, is one of them, and it's going to stay there. Every time I'm with the admirals and the generals in charge, I ask them, where do you get your talent? Because they are competing for talent, as every corporation is. Uh, and in many cases, to be a contractor with DOD in that area, um, you, you have to, you know, obviously have an incredible background. And what do we do in our country, especially in North Carolina, too? We educate so many foreigners, and then what do we do? We say, go home and compete against us. The logic isn't there. We need to pass comprehensive immigration reform. For the National Chamber of Commerce, it is their number one issue. And we need to take a serious, well, the, the Senate's already done it, I'm on board, and I'm really hoping that the House does. Well, we, we have one more question. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. We'll take these two right here. Go ahead. Okay. Go okay. Um, uh, Dusty Speedy, Pitt County, Young Democrats. Um, I was just wondering what's your opinion on the uh, Russians amassing troops on the Crimean Ukraine border, and how do you think we should proceed with handling You know, that's that? obviously uh, an ongoing issue right now, uh, and uh, I know the President's been talking about it quite a bit lately. Uh, to have a sovereign country, uh, to be taken over by a foreign country with troops, a vote two weeks uh, later, 
uh, deciding that uh, Crimea needs to be part of Russia versus uh, the Ukraine. I think that's an issue that the entire European Union and NATO is, you know, it's, we've all expressed our displeasure with that. Sanctions are ongoing right now. Uh, and so it is, uh, and we've signed uh, treaties with Ukraine uh, where they have given up nuclear weapons to have their sovereignty protected. So I think this is a very, very serious issue. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Edgecombe County. Okay. I'm in my fourth year of a uh, five-year stint in the Edgecombe Early College. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering if there was any federal legislation that you were pushing for that would expand early colleges in the state and perhaps get more funding through those schools that desperately need them. The Higher Education Act needs to be reauthorized. I sit on the Education Committee. Uh, the affordability of college is one of the key points, and one of the areas included in that is being sure that we have more availability to take those classes uh, in high school, early college, middle college, like I was saying earlier. So that is definitely a part of this uh, reauthorization of the Higher Education Act. Uh, Senator Tom Harkin chairs that committee and I actually heard him speak this week. It's a bipartisan bill, and we are moving uh, together, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to get that bill out because it is so important. And I think when we look at the high cost of college, and I, we also know how important it is, I want to be sure that's, you know, that, that, that American dream holds true for anybody who wants to take, uh, to, to become, a, uh, make available that too. So, Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for what you're doing. And uh, we're definitely working hard to be sure that that happens. Well, thank you, everyone.